what it is, man. Detroit versus everybody, man. Detroit, we rep the hardest, man. We gain the hardest. You know what you know what it is, man. Detroit, CJ, holla at your boy when we get home. All right, Jerron, and it says that, uh, you know, once he, I guess, you know, be Custio Clayton, he'd be the mandatory for, um, he'd be the mandatory for Errol Spence and IBF, and he says that, um, you know, he open to fighting him, uh, Terrence Crawford. If not, he don't have no problem with fighting for a vacant WB, uh, vacant titles, um, either. And he exceed him at 154 pounds. Now, he fights this weekend versus Custio Clayton. If you don't know, now you know. They are the co-feature, probably one of the best co-features just on paper that Premier Boston Champions um, has had, you know, uh, in, a, in a while. You know what I'm saying? Um, just on paper, you know, most people view Boots are going to blow out Custio Clayton. I mean, you know, hopefully he has some type of resistance before getting his first world title. But he might just be one of those fighters that's just – he big for the weight class and can't nobody hurt him and, you know, won't nobody challenge him till he move up in weight. That might be it. You know, that might be the situation. Probably nobody will challenge him until he moves up in weight, possibly. You know, you know, he could, you know, run through Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford. But historically speaking, he's going to, fa he's going to face some resistance soon. You know, could be Custio Clayton, could be somebody – could be for the vacant title. You never know. You know, even Earl Spence when he first won the title, he was he lost. He was down versus Kell Brook. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't a lot, but yeah, Kell Brook pulled away for a second. And then he came back and turned it up. Where Kell Brook couldn't do nothing with him. So even Earl Spence, you know, faced some uh, resistance getting the title. So you hope that he faced some type of resistance, some type of adversity, and, and honestly, that'd be better for him in a long haul to face some type of. Uh, to face some type of adversity um, before he get a world title. Now, like I said, he already know the plan. He know that Errol Spence ain't fighting him. More than likely, Terrence Crawford ain't fighting him. And he will fight for a vacant belt. All right? He he knows that's more than likely, that's more than likely going to happen. And, you know, like I said before, hopefully Cusio Clay can give us a good fight. If not, we should be able to get to the main event, you know, quicker because Steel Clayton is, is built like a tank. He uh, built strong, you know, looks strong. You know, everybody think because you look strong, you are strong. That translates over to uh, punching power. It don't. You just, you know, you got some fighters that, you know, average punchers, below average punchers, but they strong. And that strength, you know, it means a lot. But uh, nonetheless, let's transfer over to the article. You know, they're fighting at the, you know, uh, they're fighting at the uh, the old stub hub center, the Dignity Health Sports Park, the tennis court, which, you know, damn near every ticket available is, <laughs> is still available. You know what I'm saying? So uh, we talked about that last night in the separate videos, a whole bunch of tickets available for that event. At one point last week, I think it was, it was 75% of the tickets were still available, right? So, I mean, hilarious, right? Um, but, uh, but yeah, it says, Gerard Ennis, I'm coming to dominate in KO Clay, and I'm ready to take over 147 pounds. He said, I'm looking to make a big statement come May 14th, the Saturday. Ennis said, Ennis, I'm coming in. I'm coming to win in dominating fashion. Get the knockout. I'm ready to take over uh, this division. All right. Um he said, trained by his native Philadelphia, Philadelphia, uh, trained by native Philadelphia by his father, Bozzy Ennis. 24 year old Ennis has continued to push his already renowned training hammers ahead of his upcoming fight and has added elite sparring against a collection of noteworthy fighters, including unbeaten U.S. Olympian Charles Conwell and rising contender Paul Corral. Corral, I'm oh, sorry. He said, I'm feeling great, said Ennis. Quote, camp has been great. Uh, been going very well. I can't wait to shine on May 14th. I'm, I'm ready to rock and roll. We've been running a lot more sprints uh, this camp and focusing a little bit more on conditioning each day, about half an hour or more every session. Uh, and a lot of it is normal things we do, like the underwater treadmill, chopping wood. We're just working 10 times harder. So 
you know, you know him, you know, sometimes you can read between the lines. Sometimes it means nothing. Sometimes it means something, whatever it may be. But reading between the lines, I think he expected to go go some. I think he expected to go more than usual in this fight by saying they added a half an hour extra to his conditioning. So I mean, you got to do that because you never know. You, now you're knocking on the door of a championship. Now, like it or not, he's fighting on the championship level versus um, uh, Boots. I mean, versus uh, Custio Clay. So he he got to train. His last fights, one round with Delorme, six round with Lippin Yates. No, he only won no decision with uh, Chris Van Deer. You know, no, they don't call this kind of a draw. Uh, Juan Carlos Abreu, he went six. Another dude I can't pronounce the name, he went four. Damian Daniel Fernandez, three. Franklin Maney, one. Raymond Serrano, two. Uh, Armando Alvarez, three, two, one, four, two. One, 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 three, one, four, six. You know, James Winchester took him a full six in the uh, 2300 arena in Philadelphia. One, six. And he got the stoppage versus Marcus Bradford. Four, four, two, four, one, one, one. So six, it looked like to be his highest. He only went six rounds. Yep, that's his highest. You know, you know, a couple fights went six. He's never went 12. His last two fights have been 10 rounders. Delorme was a 10 rounder. I don't get that. The previous two before that was 12 rounders. So so yeah, that's the reason they're working on condition because they not they not getting they not getting the uh they're not getting the uh the rounds and they need the rounds you don't wait till you uh you know they don't, you don't want to wait till you get into that situation which you can't you can't simulate this situation even in spawn get into championship rounds in there with a real opponent no head gear no big gloves on so yeah they they know they got to step up they they condition and it's coming. He gonna go. He gonna go hard. Twelve might not be today. Might not be tomorrow. But it's coming. It's what boxing tell us. If he stick around long enough, quote. I'm feeling like I'm getting better at taking my time and being more relaxed in the ring. Said Ennis. I believe that the better uh, the competition I face, the better I'm going to be. We've been working on jabbing more and being even more alert and sharper. So here you go. You know, and Clayton Ennis will be up against an undefeated fighter. With questionable or considerable pedigree, having competed in his native Canada at the 12, 2012 Olympic Games, while Ennis chose not to focus on studying his opponent, he knows that he'll have to be, uh, be ready for a multitude of scenarios to achieve his dire results on fight night. He said, quote, I do not watch tape on people that I fight, said Ennis. Quote, I let my team focus on that. We're prepared all the way around. I don't prepare just one way because you don't know how a fighter is going to fight you, so we just prepare for everything. My thing is this. Y'all young fighters better stop repeating Floyd. You know, we watch tape. It's like the damn Miami Dolphins not watching tape or Bill, Bill Belichick not watching tape. That's, that's one of the dumbest quotes that boxers keep quoting. Watch the damn tape. Fighters got ten. You say every fight is different, but fighters got tendencies. Just like in any other sport, in tennis, you know, however you, whatever you want to talk about, individual sports, everybody have tendencies. Everybody got something that they uh that they that they lean towards you know everybody said oh, i don't watch tape you do i don't watch tape and then when he beating you upside your head you wish you would have watched tape the more people that watch tape especially you that watch tape you in the ring with them you might can pick up on something that your father can't or, or some people around you can't I hate when young father said, Oh, watch tape, man. Who who said they watch tape and just got their ass whooped? I forgot who it was. But he said, quote, this fight is everything to me. This is a big stage and it's time for me to shine from here out. It's only getting bigger and better. After I do my thing on May 14th, we're just going to keep going up and up. I'm looking to show everyone everything that I'm capable of. My speed, power, defense, ring IQ, and footwork. At the end of the night, I'm coming for the knockout. That's what the fans are coming to see. I'm going to show them what I can do and close the show with the knockout. So it says as it continues uh, his ascent of the welterweight rankings, uh, Jerron Ennis has his sights set squarely on the division's two Star Wars. Unified WCW IBF champion Earl Spencer Jr. and WBO champion Terrence Crawford. 
even if, if, if a potential suspension Crawford undisputed title fight comes to fruition first and eventually leads to Ennis fighting for vacant 147 pound titles, he believes those big fights will eventually become reality. He said, quote, it doesn't matter to me if Spencer Crawford decides to stay in the division and face me, said Ennis, quote, I'd love to take the belts away from the champions, but I have to fight for vacant belts. I see Spencer Crawford at 54 pounds. They can't go too far. Well, they can go to retirement. And, you know, Crawford said, Spencer said he got three or four more years left. So I think that might, I mean, it depends on how the division, it all depends what your goal is. Is it to make the most money you can make? I mean, if you're chasing them, then, you know, you're chasing, you chasing well to weight greatness. I get it. Even at 54, you chasing that prize money, that prize fight, and you chasing taking a fan base and getting a notoriety. But you got to get notoriety to get those fights. You got to have fans pushing for those fights. So without Virgil Ortiz, without Connor Ben willingly fighting you, without Keith Thurman willingly fighting you, without a Danny Garcia to break you through, you know what I'm saying? Even a Mario Barrios to break you through, stay on this. With all them type of dudes fighting you, Mikey Garcia, you know, um, even beat up on a half dead Amir Khan, <laughs> you know, without having one of those names to get in the ring with you, bro. Uh, you know, I don't like it's probably take four years just to make those fights. So by that time, Crawford said he ain't fighting too much longer neither. So, um, so yeah, you know, at the end of the day, he, you know, of course that's what you're supposed to do, call out the fighters, hope eventually get the fighters. But I think more than likely, you know, he'd be you know, by the time 54 come, he'd be against a, a totally different crop of fighters. And then they stretching this shit out with Terrence Crawford. They talked about September, you know, people searching Google, you're not finding that information on Google, you know. But they talking about September, they was trying to do the fight, which which I know why they're trying to do in September, because they trying, they trying to they trying to raise the prices up. It was November when Earl Spence come back. You can Google search that. Keith Thurman said that. You know, so probably November. So who knows? At the end of the day, bro, her day not closer. Now they're saying they're going to fight. It's going to happen. At the end of the day, if it happened, it happened. If it don't, it don't. It don't happen. PBC won't get my money again um, for a very long time, if ever. But, you know, Jerron Ennis, you know, you you on the back, bro. You know, if that fight don't happen in time and the IBF force you as a mandatory, cool. You know, Spence ain't gonna do my move up and vacate. And Crawford, he can't even get a, a deal to fight with Showtime, so he probably gonna move up and vacate. So, who knows? You know, he highly ranked in, in both. Uh, he two in the WBO, right? Errol Spence don't have an IBF, and he 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 ain't even an IBF. Oh, he number three, so ain't no two or one in the IBF. No, he number two in the WBA. And he ain't ranked in the, in the WBC. Oh, he number four in the WBC. So he highly ranked. He knocked on the door for a title shot. So these dudes better move or shake, you know, shake the spot. But, hey, let me know what you girls and guys think. Thumbs up the video. Share the video. Subscribe to the channel. Next subscribe button. It's the bell icon button. Hit all notifications. Increase your chance. Get notifications. We'll live or drop a video. And then you want to support the channel, cash out, dollar sign, CJ Good 313 Venmo, CJ Good 313 PayPal link in the description. Best way to donate to the channel. Thumbs up the video. Share the video. Subscribe to the channel. Next subscribe button is the bell icon button. Hit all notifications. Increase your chance of notification. Financial want to support the channel. Cash app. Dollar sign CJ Good 313. Venmo CJ Good 313. PayPal link in the description. Uh, check out my uh, link tree link in the description. The first link there. You can find me on Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, Spotify, Anchor, Cash App, PayPal, Venmo, okay. Venmo, and much more. Appreciate that. Let me know. Stay in the comment section. Check the box and news playlist and the World to Wait playlist for more videos like this.